Peace to the gods. You're listening to Hindsight Radio. Peace, everybody. This is Akeem from Hindsight Radio, the information station changing the nation. Um, I wanted to talk today about <clears throat> voluntary withholding agreements, uh, a.k.a. W-4 forms. Um, these are the forms that you fill out when you uh, get a job. They make you fill these things out. Uh, they call them a Form W-4 Withholding Exemption Certificate. So this is the form you fill out to let them know whether you want money taken out of your check or uh, you're exempt for some reason. So first, we're going to read the laws, and then we are going to read the actual form. Um, that you fill out and I'm going to expose how limited it is for you, um, to even, uh, fill that out. You know, it's, it's designed in a way where you can only fill it out a certain way. All right, but let's look at it. This is, uh, withhold volunteer withholding group that's agreements section 31.3402 P dash one, um, under, Let's see, what, what title is this under? It's under Title 26, this code here. You can see everything right here uh, under Title 26. And you know Title 26, 26 is Internal Revenue Service, Department of Treasury, you know, that whole thing. So let's read this. It says, A, an employee, employer, employee agreement. So... That says agreement, right? So let's let's look at the definition of an agreement. Uh, let's close that page out. That's my uh, other business I work on. Um, let's look at this. Uh, agreement. Definition, harmony or accordance in opinion or feeling, a position or result of agreeing, accord, concurrence, consensus, harmony, accordance, unity. So they're saying that the voluntary withholding agreement is something you must be in harmony with, in agreement with. You and I both know that's a bunch of BS because when you go get a job, they shove this form in front of you. And they say, we need this filled out before you leave here. And you got to fill it out. So how is that an agreement? Right there, that's you're doing it under extreme duress or minor duress, whatever. Or you're just doing it out of just plain ignorance. Because everybody else is doing it. You've never read this. And my goal today is to wake you up. To show you the truth about this form. Now, what you do with this information is strictly up to you. I will tell you, your job will give you resistance because they are in bed with the government and they are in fear of the government, so they do whatever the government says, even if it's unlawful. Okay. An employee and his employer may enter into an agreement under section 3402p3a to provide for the withholding of income tax upon payments of amounts described in paragraph b1 of section 31.341a-3 made after December 31st 1970 an agreement may be entered into under this section only with respects to amounts which are includable in the gross income of the employee under section 61 and must be applicable to all such amounts paid by the employer to the employee. The amount to be withheld pursuant to an agreement under Section 3402P3A shall be determined under the rules contained in Section 3402 and the regulations thereunder. See Section 31.3405C-1. Q&A, 3, concerning agreements to have more than 20% federal income tax withheld from eligible rollover distribution 
distributions within the meaning of section 402. All right, let's go to B. So all in this section is saying you and your employer enter into an agreement. So it has to be a, a, a meeting of the minds and you say whether you want to do this or not. It's not, doesn't sound like it's mandatory to me so far. But let's keep re reading. Form and duration of employer-employee agreement. Except as provided in subdivision 2 of this paragraph, an employee who desires to enter into an agreement under section 3402P3A shall furnish his employer with form W-4, withholding exemption certificate, executed in accordance with the provisions of section 3402F and the regulations thereunder. The, the furnishing of such form W-4 shall constitute a request for withholding. Wow, it's saying that the employee shall furnish the employer with form W-4 if, if they desire to enter an agreement. Desire to enter an agreement under Section 3402P3A. Now, I've known where the IRS have did what you call a lock-in letter, and they force you to take money out. But this here has not, the IRS is not authorized to force you to do anything. But they know, see, the employer becomes a what you call a withholding agent. So because they become a withholding agent, they will listen to the IRS regardless if this is against your rights. Let's touch bases on the lock-in letter. Let's touch a little bit on that. How is a lock-in letter violating your rights protected by the Constitution? Well, let's go to a Constitution. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go to a Constitution. Let's see. Let's, let's just pick anyone. Let's pick any Constitution. Okay, let's use the North Carolina Constitution. Um... And I'm just going to grab up a constitution here. This is North Carolina. I'm going to read that. This is North Carolina State Constitution Preamble. And you notice it says North Carolina State Constitution, not the state of North Carolina. State Constitution. It's just, you know, you got to be careful with these words. But you got to also notice this is in all caps. So I'm, I'm saying... Right now, this constitution in particular probably is the corporation constitution because it's all in all caps. It's not like this. We the people of the state of North Carolina. See how they got this word? And it's up and lower. We'll talk about that. That's a whole nother lesson. But let's go into here and see how they are violating your rights by forcing you into an agreement under the W-4 when you get these lock-in letters. Here it is. Let's let's talk about this. Um, blah blah blah. Right of assembly, religious liberty, freedom of speech, education, ex post facto law. Oh, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's go to law of the land, equal protection of the laws, North Carolina Constitution. No person shall be taken in prison or deceased of his free old liberties or privileges or outlawed or exiled or any man deprived of his life, liberty, or property but by the law of the land. No person shall be denied the equal protection of laws, nor shall any person be subjected to discrimination by the state because of race, color, religion, or national origin. No, I don't like this one. Let's keep going. I'm kind of doing this on the fly. So, bear with me. Okay, let's see here. Equity restraints on liberty, rights of the accused. What I'm looking for is your right of due process. Due process is what I'm looking for. Um, every person restrained of his liberty is entitled to remedy to acquire into the lawfulness thereof and to remove the restraint if unlawful. That remedy shall be denied, shall not be denied or delayed. The privilege of writ of habeas corpus shall be shall not be suspended. This is, um, kind of helps out because when they force you into an agreement, they're restraining you of your liberty. 
to make money. They're taking that money by force without going to a court of law to say that you are in violation of some law that they have to even force you into this agreement. How do you have due process to be heard when they're going to force you, hey, we, you got to pay us, you got to give us this. They don't have the right to force anything out of you, especially with this W-4 form. Um, this doesn't say the words exactly. Uh, this is another one. It's not, it, this says general warrants, but it says general warrants will by any officer or other person may be commanded to search, suspect, the place without evidence of the act committed or to seize any person or persons not named whose offense is not particularly described and supported by evidence are dangerous to liberty and shall be, not be granted. So, the regular officer has to get a warrant to do anything to take from you. Where does the IRS get a warrant to take your money? When they go to your employer, they say, you got to pay us. No court order, no nothing. Not anything to support to say, well, they say, well, you didn't take out enough money, so we're going to just take your money by force. There is no due process of law. You have a right to be heard in a court to say you violated something, some rule. Know why they don't bring you to court? Because guess what? There is no such law that they can back up to force you into taking your money. All right. Let me keep going. I didn't find exactly what I wanted, but um, oh well, here's another thing. This is a perfect one right here. Section 17 says slavery is forever prohibited, involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for a crime whereof the parties have been adjudged guilty, is forever prohibited. So when I'm Forced into this contract. What is that? Involuntary servitude. So let's look that up. Let's look up involuntary servitude. Let's look it up. See what that means. Because I don't think people really understand what these terms mean. You know why? Because they never read the Constitution. Involuntary servitude or involuntary slavery is a United States legal and constitutional term for a person laboring against that person's will to benefit another. So you are forced to labor, give your money for the benefit of who? United States Treasury on behalf of, well, the IRS is the one that's the third party debt collector collecting on behalf of the Treasury. Under some form of coercion other than the worker's financial needs. That's involuntary servitude. That's why they're not taking you into court. They're just sending these lock-in letters. All right, let's keep reading this involuntary this voluntary withholding agreement, which is treated as a involuntary withholding agreement. Okay, let's get to the meat of this. Number two, in the case of an employee who desires to enter an agreement under Section 3402P3A with his employer, if the employee performs services in addition to those to be the subject of the agreement, the remuneration for which is subject to mandatory income tax withholding, by such employer, or if the employee wishes to specify the agreement terminate on a specific date, the employee shall furnish the employee with a request for withholding, which shall be signed by the employee, and it shall contain A, the name, address, and social security number of the employee making the request. See, it says making a request. The name and address of the employer. The statement that the employee desires to withhold a federal income tax and apl applicable of qualified state individual income tax, see paragraph D31 of section 301.6361-1 of this chapter, Regulations and Procedures and Administration. And if the employee desires, desires that the agreement terminate on a specific date, the date of termination of the agreement. Okay, this gave specific rules how this is supposed to be done. Very specific rules. So they're not going to like me showing you guys this. Because now I'm empowering you to think for yourself. Okay? They don't want people to think for themselves. They, that's why they send you to compulsory schools. 
first thing they do with these children when they go to school is pledge allegiance to this flag, walk down this side of the hallway, hold hands, be quiet, go to the... Really, school is just teaching you how to follow orders. They're not really giving you an education that you can use outside of that for the rest of your life. Okay? Just... They're just teaching you how to stay in line. Do not get out of line. Do not talk. Raise your hand when you got to go to the bathroom. All right, let's keep going. Okay, here's the specific rules. It says here, go back. The employee wishes to specify the agreement, terminate. So you give them an agreement and you give them a date when you want it to terminate. So you have an option. When have you ever been told that you had that option? And the employer must sign it. Employee must sign it, give it to his point, and it must include his name, address, social security number, employee making a request, the name and address of the employer. Then, this is the kicker. In C, it says a statement that the employee decides we're holding a federal income tax. Okay, let's stop right there and let's go to the W 44. This is the PDF. Let's go. Let's make this a little bit larger so you can read it. Form W-4. This is the newest one uh, that you do. And it's got specific instructions. It says, if you are, here, let's go general instructions. It says, if you aren't exempt, follow the rest of these instructions to determine the number of withholding allowance you should claim. For withholding for 2019, any additional amount of tax have to have withheld. For regular wages, withholding must be based on the allowance you claim. It may not be flat amount or percentage of wages. And then it tells you you can use the calculator, blah, blah, blah. So this is the certificate. But guess what? It is not the statement. So what this is saying, you must... Give a formal statement, which will be attached or included with the W-4 form. That's what they're saying. So, here's my question. How many people had a statement included with the W-4 form, employees withholding allowance certificate? I never was presented or even told that I had to fill that out or give them a statement. So, that means that every W-4 form is incorrect. It is the, it's incomplete. That sounds like remedy to me. Everyone has not followed the rules, but yet when you don't do this, they penalize you, the little guy, the worker who just want to make a living taking care of their family the best way they can. You are penalized for them not following these rules. With the lock-in letters. Because I know some people, they just put exempt here. And then they come in, oh, well, no. Make them take out at the highest rate. Why can they do that? Because I'll explain that later. All right, so look at the W-4 form. It says, okay, you put your first name, last name. Do you notice how they have the first and the last name? It's not. This is the one of the only forms that I've seen in the government where they don't ask you for the last name first. Why? Because they're looking for that straw man. This is the straw man's account. This is not you. They're looking to tax the straw man. The, the one that is in the federal territory. That has a social security number attached. This is not you. This is the straw man information. Alright. You put your address. All of these things. Whether you're single married. You know. Whether you're single corporation or married corporation. I'm using these words. Specifically, I'm being deliberate in the words I'm using. Or if you marry corporation or single corporation, but you want to hold withhold at the higher rate. All right. And if your last name is different, then once you get a replacement card, so security card. This look look at these what they're asking you. They're asking for all straw man information. Then your allowance is number five. Number six is additional amount of any you want without if you want to 
voluntarily give up your money again. You know. Alright. Uh, I claim exemption withholding for 29. I certified that I meet both the following conditions. Exemption. You're going to have to read that. What they um, include exempt. I'm not going to do it in this video. But it's very specific, specific parameters to this. That only fall into where they want you to be so they can take your money. Then they put under penalties of perjury. I declare that I have examined this certificate and to the best of my knowledge and belief it is true and correct. So you're signing here that they can penalize you if you put false information or what they deem as false information on this form. See, this is why these forms are, what are you giving up when you fill out these forms? Your Fifth Amendment rights not to incriminate yourself. Okay? All right. And here's the instructions. Go back and read it. I said, I'm just briefly going to, let's go back to the, the law, what it says. If accepted by the employer as provided in subdivision three of this subparagraph, the request shall be attached to and constitute part of the employee's form W-4. So it says, if the employer accepts it, so he got to agree too. The request shall be attached to. So you got to make an, a, a request that includes all of this information up here. And it's got to be attached to Form W-4. An employee who furnishes his employee a request for withholding under this subdivision shall also furnish such employee with a Form W-4 if such employee does not already have a Form W-4 in effect with such employer. So it's saying it again. An employee who furnishes his employer a request for withholding. So you got to go in there and make a formal request by a former in the form of a statement. Then the employer hands you the W-4. This is the rules. This sounds like a massive, massive lawsuit. <coughs> because our... United States, not our, the United States government has been infringing on every American's rights. Now, I'm saying Americans. I'm not saying U.S. citizens or citizens of the United States because they don't have any rights. If you call yourself a national, but not a citizen of the United States, an American national, but not a citizen of the United States, then you're not part of this. If you're an American national, but not a citizen, that's it. This doesn't apply, but this is all for their employees. And who is the citizen of the United States? The straw man. Why? Because they created that number for them. Then they hand it to you and said, you can use it. Here, here, buddy, here's a benefit. Take this. Use it. Use it for credit. Use it to get your house. Use it to get, uh, get apartments. Use it to get your lights turned on. Use it to get... Your cell phone turned on. See, you've been what you call bamboozled. Here's how you've been bamboozled. No one specifically gave you a law and said that you had to use this number to do business with. But when you go into a business, they ask you for it. So you feel like you're obligated to give it to them. That's a whole nother subject. So basically, due to your ignorance in following the pack, following being a sheep, and following what other people do, you voluntarily entered into all of these contracts that you didn't know you didn't have to enter to enter. What would happen? You get born under first thing they do, give you a birth certificate, then your mom runs down there and gets you a social security card. Oh, we need this because we got to re register. We got to go. Do y'all understand that that social security number is the beast? I believe it's the beast. It's the number of the beast. It belongs to the beast. That beast comes after you when you use it and don't do the rules. So if you're using your social, you got to follow their rules. You got to do a tax return if you're using their social. If you're touching their franchise, you got to fill out the W-4 form if you're going to use that. Hmm. Now, I'm just, I know I just got people thinking. Well, how do I work without a social? They want it. Okay. You might want to investigate people like the Mennonites. You might want to investigate, you know, 
the Jewish community. There's people out there working without using these socials, not without touching these government numbers. The ultimate thing you want to do is go in business for yourself. You won't be a slave. But let's keep going. An agreement under Section 3402P3A shall be effective for such period as the employer or employee mutually agree upon. Here it is again. However, either the employer or employee may terminate the agreement prior to the end of such period by furnishing a signed written notice to the other. So you can write a, how do you terminate this agreement? You sign a written notice to your employer to terminate that. This is what the rules are saying. But I'm going to tell you right now, the employer is going to fight you on this. No matter if you show him this or not, you, all roads will lead to court on these matters. Exercise your rights. Don't be afraid. The reason why we have these issues is because only one or two people are fighting for their rights while the other ones are watching them crash and burn without helping. The only way we get our rights is for us to band together and fight for them. See, we're fighting... Small little wars individually. No real support. They are deliberately stealing your money. These rules are clear. I'm not reading off of some website. I'm reading off out of the rule what it says. Just that alone is a violation of your rights of due process, putting you into involuntary servitude. You don't have all the information to make an informed decision. So what does that mean? That any contract you enter to without all of the information being revealed to you, whether it was voluntary or involuntary, that's void ab initio. What's void ab initio? Let's, you know, I'm using words that you may not be familiar with, but let's see what that is. Void Ab initia. The term void ab initia, which means to be treated as invalid from the outset, comes from adding the Latin phrase ab initio from the beginning as a qualifier. For example, in many jurisdictions where a person signs a crime contract under duress, that contract is treated as being void ab initio. Aren't you, when they tell you to fill out the W 4 form, it's done under duress. Whether you want to see that way, because they tell you, you can't even get the job without filling that out. But you need your job to pay your bills. So you're going to fill it out. Void ab initio. These are legal terms. I'm arming you guys with your tools to go after these people and for taking your money. And at the end of this, I'm going to show you a law that's going to Basically, take a slab chamber to everything you thought you knew. But let me continue reading this thing, and then we'll get to that law. All right. Uh, unless the employer employee agrees to an earlier termination date, the notice shall be effective with respect to the first payment of an amount in respect of which the agreement is in effect, which is made on or after the first status determination date. January 1st, May 1st, July 1st, or October 1st of each year. That occurs at least 30 days after the date in which the notice is furnished. If the employee executes a new Form W-4, the request upon which an agreement under Section 3402 P3A is based shall be attached to and constitute a part of such new Form W-4. So it's, the statement got to go with the W-4. It, it just keeps saying it over and over. Other payments. The Secretary may issue guidance by publication in the Revenues Revenue, Internal Revenue Bulletin, IRB, which will be available at irs.gov. I suggest you read these bulletins. Describing other payments for which withholding under voluntary withholding agreement would be appropriate in authorizing payers to agree to withhold income tax on such payments if requested by the payee. Requirements regarding the form and duration of voluntary withholding agreements authorized by this paragraph will be provided in IRB guidance issue regarding specific types of payments. And there you go, and there you have it. I mean, I can't say it no clearly than that. It's everything about it is up to you. It's your choice to fill these out. It's your choice to give an employees. I understand this is going to probably bankrupt some companies because they can't take your money and make a profit off of it. 
Because what they do is they take the money, sit it in an account, and they get interest off of that until they give it up to the IRS. That's what's going on here. Everybody's making money off of you but you. All right. Let's go and look at something um, that I have helped people, show people. Um, you know, computer wants to move a little slow today. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the nationality stuff real hard because that's going to protect you from all of this stuff, right? That's going to protect you. So you. You can tell I'm doing this on the on fly. So let's do it. Let's do this. I know it's in here. Um, my. Uh, da -da. You see, I got me some IRS disputes. Yes, I do know how to fight these people. I'm perfecting it every day. Uh. By the way, I do have a webinar coming up this coming Saturday on the 7th. Uh, this is my, um, I'm looking for the right one. Because I upgraded this thing. Let's see. Alright, found it. Man, that took a minute. Uh, mm -mm. Come on, open up, baby. Baby, baby, baby. And we're going to scroll on down. Scroll on down. Scroll on down to the Pacific Law. Right here. 31. U.S. Code Section 321. Let's actually go to that code. I'm gonna copy that. Um, let's go to it because I don't. I don't like reading reading from my. I don't want y'all reading from my um, template there. I want y'all to read from what they say, not what I say. Let's click it. It says uh, 31 U.S. Code 321, and keep on going. This is the, the actual code. Oh, uh, right here, right here. Let's stop right here. You know, for federal purposes, right there. Right there. For purpose of the federal income, estate, gift taxes, property accepted under paragraph one shall be considered as a gift or bequest or for the use of the United States. So, let's, what is a gift? What is a gift or bequest? What is that? <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling you, this beast is, this beast is something else, ain't it? Gift? No, I don't want to see gifts. I want to see definition. All right. A thing given willingly to someone without payment, a present. Wow. So let's let's look up the word bequest. Bequest. We gotta be thorough. Bequest. The action of bequeathing something, endowment, estate, heritage, inheritance. What? So you're bequesting your inheritance over to them? Huh? Are you endowing them? Wow. Okay. I, I just wanted y'all to see that. That's the law. That's 31. USC section 321, general authority of the secretary. And scrolling on down. To D2. There it is. Hitting in their law. Federal income is a gift or bequest. All right. 
I think I've given you guys enough to think about, enough to be upset about, enough to, <laughs> to you know, I know some, only a few of you guys are probably going to react on this and do something about it. But if you really want to understand what to do, join my webinar on December the 7th. I'm going to show you guys how to go into these courts and deal with these types of issues. And I will warn you. This is a, a battle because they're so used to getting people for it. It's not going to be easy. So if you, if, you, if you want it easy, don't even bother getting on the webinar. But if you just want the information, and again, all of this is for informational purposes only. I'm not a lawyer or an attorney. Uh, but I do know how to read and interpret things. Why? Because I look up definitions. I go, you know, you know uh, read these things. So... If you want to empower yourself to free yourself, join me on that webinar. Um, also, my shows are Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash hindsight2020. All right, peace.